Hi, I'm Snigdha Sharma and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. As the pandemic rages on in India, making it the worst affected countries in the world, we are dealing with all kinds of obstacles in the fight against COVID-19. In this episode of Three Things, we discuss the oxygen shortage being reported from across the country and the US export embargo on raw material that is affecting vaccine production in India. But first we begin with a new study on the virus that was recently published by the Lancet. A team of experts looked at available research and their findings have only reinforced what researchers had already suspected about coronavirus. They found that there is strong and consistent evidence that the primary transmission route of SARS-CoV-2 is indeed airborne. Now this obviously changes our approach to the battle against the virus to quite an extent. To find out how we spoke to Indian Express's Amitabh Sinha. So Amitabh we know that there were studies earlier that indicated that the virus is airborne. So what is new about the latest study published by the Lancet? You are right there have been studies earlier which have produced evidence to show that this virus gets transmitted through air as well. But what this study does is it pieces together all such evidences from previous studies from ongoing studies and it analyzed all the evidence and what it is trying to say this study is that predominantly this virus seems to be spreading through air not through droplets or any other means that were till now the considered scientific opinion was that primarily it is getting transmitted through droplets you know the droplets that come out of our mouth when we speak or sneeze or cough and can infect the person standing close by who is speaking or if you are just near that person and happen to be a few feet then the droplet transmission was supposed to be the predominant way how this virus was transmitting now this study says that hold on most likely this is happening predominantly through air so that's all that this study does it pieces together all the evidences that have been there analyzes evidences against airborne transmission as well and then comes to the conclusion that look it seems that airborne transmission is the most common way of transmission in this virus so what were the factors that researchers considered before they came to this conclusion okay so they have listed out several things several evidences that they analyzed including the fact that there is a greater likelihood of people getting infected when they are indoors than when they are outdoors also when they are indoors if there is sufficient ventilation and air circulation happening then the chances of them getting infected reduces drastically so these kind of evidences that they picked up from several studies done across the globe they analyzed all such different evidences and that's when they come to the conclusion that they seem convinced that it's happening mainly through airborne transmission of course it doesn't rule out transmission by other modes as well it doesn't rule out the transmission by droplets for example or even say some things like surface contact when this epidemic had started there was a lot of discussion on whether you can get the virus through surface contact so if an infected person touched a utensil for example does another person pick up the virus from utensils and or your door knob for example or the lift button for example and there have been evidences for and against such arguments so it's possible that the virus is transmitting through other modes as well possibly even through surface transmission although the evidence now seems to be that surface transmission is causing very minor sort of reason for transmission of this virus but this study all that it says is airborne is the main reason and there might be other modes of transmission as well right so amita what does this mean for the current guidelines that we have against covid-19 and uh, how will the government adapt to these new findings if you remember at the start of the epidemic last year initially the initial guidance was that you don't need to wear masks because masks would not be able to prevent the transmission it's not happening that ways at all so 
masks are not at all required at that point of time that was the evidence that prevailed but slowly over period of time it became a very evident that you know masks are probably your best protection against the transmission so new and new evidences keep coming it's it's an evolving sort of an epidemic and the scientific data and the scientific evidence is also evolving and it gets better by the day so any such new finding has a lot of implications on how people should behave in order to protect themselves from this virus so it's becoming a lot of people are already telling us that if you are in enclosed spaces then you must have some amount of ventilation going on so if you're living in your house it's better that you open your windows rather than keep it all shut and put a, put on your acs it actually is much better if you are in an open space so compared to if you are sitting out in a veranda for example then your likelihood of getting the virus gets reduced compared to when you are in a closed room so these kind of guidances uh, these kind of new guidelines or policy interventions by the government are based on such scientific data or such scientific inputs that come through research so i'm sure this particular one would also influence some sort of there might be some changes in the guidances that are issued by the governments and bodies like the world health organization and all so with that in mind what about events like the kumbh mela it was held in an open space right in kumbh mela this argument just turns on its head because there are just so many people together any kind of crowd and too many people packed at one place whether it's open space or closed spaces is a problem now if all these people were crammed into a hall then the likelihood of transmission of virus would increase many fold but the mere fact that they are all in the open doesn't do much so many people at one place as such a huge crowd is bound to let the virus spread amongst the population so this kind of study probably would not apply in a situation like the kumbh mela but the general thing about crowds and the general thing about people not maintaining safe distances from each other they have they apply in all such situations right so kumbh mela is problematic not because its virus is uh, transmits through air it's problematic just because there are so many people in close contact with each other so what can we do at an individual level to ramp up our own protection against the virus see this would have implication in terms of probably 6 feet distance is no longer as safe as it was considered at one point of time right it can even have implications for the kind of masks that we wear now are the masks designed to prevent droplets now droplets are slightly bigger in size than the air molecules the aerosols right so do we wear masks which actually prevent the passage of aerosols as well or are they designed only for large droplets so there are implications for these kind of uh, choices these kind of decisions that we make on a day to day basis so i mean we'll have to wait for more scientific advice on this and now coming to the biggest cause of concern as of now in the country apart from the virus itself the shortage of oxygen Several states have reported shortages of medical oxygen for a growing number of patients in need of oxygen support. Nursing homes and small hospitals are either discharging patients or referring them to other facilities as they run out of oxygen supply. The dearth of oxygen has even caused several deaths of critical COVID patients in India. To understand the extent of this crisis and what the government is doing to deal with it, we spoke to Tabasum Barnagarwala. Tabasum why are we facing this shortage despite of it being a well known fact that oxygen is essential for covid treatment so india's uh, overall capacity for medical oxygen is more than 7000 metric ton per day until last year we did not have uh, that many covid 19 cases i'm assuming india's requirement was not 
beyond 3500 metric tons of oxygen per day for medical purposes in fact we were also distributing oxygen for industrial purposes but this is what has happened is because the number of covid-19 cases has really shot up we have more than 16 lakh active cases right now complete supply to industries has stopped but even that is not enough to suffice for the rising number of covid-19 cases that we are seeing in the country about 10 to 15 percent of patients in some states 20 percent of active patients require oxygen support for getting stable and they could require this for 10 to 14 days so what we are seeing this year is that the number is rising every day and india does not have enough stock of oxygen production of oxygen that it can provide to each hospital and the supply can remain smooth to give you an example maharashtra until last year required 750 to 800 metric ton of oxygen maximum for all its covid-19 patients and this year maharashtra requires around 1300 metric ton per day so this is happening across different states in india madhya pradesh has no manufacturing unit for oxygen and it completely relies on other states for oxygen support so the time required to transport oxygen from the manufacturing unit to the hospital is taking longer because oxygen is traveling longer distances for example it is traveling from chatisgarh gujarat to madhya pradesh it is traveling from chatisgarh in gujarat to maharashtra so the road transport is taking longer and what we are seeing right now is a lot of rural hospitals and a lot of smaller nursing homes in satellite towns are the ones who are bearing the brunt because they depend on daily oxygen supply and if oxygen is not supplied even for one day they actually have to move their patients to another hospital or they have to look for spare cylinders to sort of let a few hours pass by before there could be some other arrangement done so we have reached a point where there is hand to mouth situation as of now Before we go any further Tabasum if you can tell us in what forms is oxygen available apart from cylinders The most traditional way of providing medical oxygen is production of liquid oxygen in huge plants this oxygen is 99.5% pure so this is the oxygen which is used for medical purposes now the traditional route is it is produced in a manufacturing unit then it is transferred into jumbo tankers and it is transported in special cryogenic tankers which have a specific temperature to preserve this oxygen in liquid state and then it is converted into gas in a process called gasification and then transferred into jumbo cylinders dura cylinders and smaller cylinders which then go to different hospitals or they reach home for home isolated patients now another way of using uh, medical oxygen is through oxygen concentrators which are small portable devices that can be moved from one place to another very easily and they do not actually require liquid oxygen uh, supply they use the atmospheric gas and they provide oxygen to the patient but there are very very limited oxygen concentrators available there needs to be more production of them and uh, they have a specific capacity you cannot put a patient who requires icu support or ventilator support on oxygen gen- uh, concentrators because there is a limited flow which it will provide so people who require high flow oxygen will need eventually need to rely on dura cylinders or jumbo cylinders So as of now which are the worst affected states So there are 12 high burden states that the central government has identified these are Maharashtra Madhya Pradesh Gujarat Rajasthan Karnataka Uttar Pradesh Delhi Chhattisgarh Kerala Tamil Nadu Punjab and Haryana Now these are the states which will see a shoot up in requirement of oxygen in the next few days Tell us some if you can tell us in more detail the issues that some of these states are dealing with currently. So Madhya Pradesh has no plant of its own to produce oxygen and it has to rely on neighboring states to supply. Now because Gujarat itself is seeing a rise in cases, eventually it will reach a point where it will not be able to supply oxygen to Madhya Pradesh. So Madhya Pradesh is a state there are similar states like Madhya Pradesh who do not have their own plants and who are going to rely on other states. So the central government has to now coordinate between states decide which state has surplus oxygen diverted to states which have absolutely no uh, buffer stock left and it has to use road transport majorly to transport oxygen recently there are discussions which are happening where uh, air lift is an option that is being looked at apart from that ministry of railways has approved that trains will be used to transport oxygen in special cryogenic tankers so that is something which is soon going to start maharashtra has been requesting for speeding up transport because they're seeing a delay in supply of oxygen 
every day there are smaller nursing homes and hospitals which are forced to transfer patients to other hospitals because they are running out of oxygen supply the problem at least in maharashtra is very severe in satellite towns because most of the stock is diverted towards urban cities which are actually also seeing more covid-19 cases and because of this the smaller towns and the smaller hospitals are not able to get their daily requirement and uh, what is the government doing to deal with this crisis right now there are some states where there are less number of covid-19 patients and they have surplus of oxygen they're going to divert that oxygen to these 12 states over the next 10 days in three different phases more than 17000 metric ton of oxygen will be directed to these 12 states to at least help them sort of suffice for their daily demand so there's a projected demand that the state and the central government have come up with and based on that projected demand they are going to supply at least this much oxygen to these states apart from that what the government is now planning to do is that the ministry of health and family welfare will be floating a tender to import 50000 metric ton of medical oxygen they are also reaching out to different mission states mission points across the globe to look at places where there is surplus oxygen and they'll be diverting it through mea to india through diplomatic channels uh, other solutions and alternatives that the government is also looking at are big tankers to store oxygen inside the hospital premise itself so that at least in a civil hospital or a government hospital which is treating say more than 100 or 150 covid patients has at least 10 days of buffer stock with them and they don't have to depend on a daily supply from distributors and vendors so these are some alternatives that the government is looking at apart from that there are also plans to have uh, manufacture more concentrators and provide concentrators in hospitals so that if there is no liquid medical oxygen available which is called lmo then oxygen concentrators could be the second alternative the petroleum and safety organization has also issued orders to divert all the argon and nitrogen tankers for oxygen transport because the current number of oxygen tankers are not enough for 24/7 transportation so there'll be more tankers roped in um, all the resources from other gaseous productions have been diverted towards oxygen so that optimum utilization of resources can be done um so what are the supply related issues that we are currently facing so when we talk to uh, vendors and distributors their one complaint is that say for example we know this one sk agency which supplies to most of the hospitals in the thane district they said that they do not have enough drivers and enough vehicles to transport oxygen so there are 10 demands coming at the same time from 10 different hospitals and they only have say one tanker and one driver to reach each hospital so those are some basic resource constraints that we are seeing in the low, lower level of the chain of the supply chain at the higher end from the manufacturers and they are saying that they can only produce a particular amount of oxygen every day and the demand is more than that so there is nothing that they can do at their level to support additional demand there is also a problem of having enough cryogenic tankers and manufacturers are saying that they also need some kind of backup support more resources more drivers because they need to transport more and more oxygen on a daily basis all this has also increased the cost of oxygen earlier when we were finding that oxygen was easily available for 17 to 18 rupees per cubic meter now the cost has increased to 22 in some places rupees 25 per cubic meter so the increase in cost is slowly going to affect the end user which is going to be a patient in a hospital or a patient in home isolation the rent for oxygen concentrators is increasing because it is in high demand and the supply is limited a uh, same is the situation with cylinders there are not enough cylinders cylinders to fill and transport and provide it to hospitals so only when an empty cylinder comes to a vendor only then he is able to fill it up and replace the other cylinders so until they get the empty cylinder they do not have enough cylinders to sort of keep supplying them and finally coming to another impending pandemic related issue that might lead to another crisis if left unaddressed As we know several states have already raised the issue of vaccine shortage with the center and as states ran out of vaccine stocks on Friday Adar Punawala the CEO of Serum Institute of India the world's largest vaccine manufacturer appealed to the United States President Joe Biden to lift the embargo on export of raw materials that are required to manufacture vaccines outside the US 
the continued restrictions under America's Defense Production Act that have been invoked frequently throughout this pandemic may not only cause a fight for limited resources but also may delay regulatory clearances of some of these vaccines. We spoke to Indian Express's Prabha Raghavan about what is going on. So Prabha, what are these raw materials that we need from the United States and why are they important for vaccine production? So these raw materials that more specifically Serum Institute of India's CEO has really been flagging publicly over the last two months, they include bioreactor disposable, single-use disposable bioreactor bags, which he's calling plastic bags. There are also materials that include filters and cell culture media. And these are products that are used in the early to mid stages of production of these vaccines. We've only heard Serum Institute of India being extremely vocal about these issues because Serum Institute of India is making two vaccines under license from companies that have developed these products outside of India. One is Covishield, which was developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca, which is a Swedish-British company. And the second one is is a vaccine that was developed by an American vaccine company called Novavax. Now, Adar Punavala has been flagging these restrictions as an impediment to the company's ability to make the Novavax vaccine, which Serum has been calling Covovax over a year. And they've said that the lack of plastic bags, filters, and cell culture media, which are used to grow the virus, to filter and purify the proteins that are brought out from the process, and to store a lot of these materials safely. The lack of these materials are going to cut down the company's ability to produce Covovax by 50%, which means that they're only going to be able to produce and stockpile half of what they would have been able to do if there was no embargo on these raw materials. But at the same time, we're hearing from other experts that these kinds of materials are not just used in the production of vaccines like Covovax, which is a protein subunit vaccine. These materials are also used to make other kinds of vaccines as well. And a lot of these types of, of technologies that are being used uh, or a lot of these vaccines that are being made in India may on some level require these kinds of products. And the United States, unfortunately, is among a major supplier of these raw materials. So how has the embargo affected vaccine production in our country? So to start with, Serum Institute of India's CEO has already publicly said that the embargo is going to cut its ability to make uh, Covovax by by 50%. But at the same time, like I said, some experts had been flagging um, these raw materials as products that are used in the manufacturing of various other vaccines. Now, a vaccine expert that I spoke to, she'd said that the United States is really the preferred location from which a lot of companies import cell culture media. And these products are used by any company or any vaccine maker that is making a vaccine that requires the growing of of cells, the growing of or cultivating the virus or the bacteria that is being used in their vaccines. So this, in effect, would end up impacting production of, of vaccines like the ones being developed by Biological E, for example, the one that it's developing in collaboration with the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. We're not sure entirely if this might mean that Covaxin's or Bharat Biotech uh, and India's ability to produce Covaxin uh, is hit as a result of these raw material, as a result of the embargo on exports of these raw materials. But at the same time, we can't be so sure because a lot of these companies have not been coming forward with or been too forthcoming with the exact products that are used in the production of their vaccines. We also, and this is something that experts feel going forward, this raw material crunch may also impact Serum's ability to make 
Covishield, which is one of the major vaccines that are currently being used in India's vaccination program. Serum has already been facing issues scaling up production of this vaccine because of a fire that it had experienced in one of the manufacturing plants that was supposed to help it increase the number of doses that it could supply. Um, and we're seeing this adding a strain on the company's ability to export vaccines to other countries as well, um, even though it has contracts to supply several doses of Covishield to various countries, as well as as a contract with the COVAX facility that is being run by the World Health Organization and Gavi, it's not really been able to meet its commitments. It's not really been able to scale up production. And some experts fear that this raw material crunch may add to its inability to increase production of this vaccine. So, Prabha, are there any other suppliers of these materials apart from the United States? And if there are, then why can we not ask them to supply these materials to India? You know, during the course of the pandemic, the demand for a lot of these raw materials has spiked. It's gone up immensely because it's not just three or four companies that are making these vaccines. You have to remember that there are hundreds of companies that are developing vaccines. And all of these vaccines are basically in a race to supply as many doses as possible to a large part of the world. This means that from the start of the pandemic till now, during the course of it, a lot of these companies have already fought each other to corner resources to make these vaccines. So at this stage, when one of the suppliers or two of your suppliers have stopped giving you the products that you need, you might find yourself in a situation where you're struggling to find an alternative. And this is especially true in the case of companies that didn't earlier on in the pandemic block resources from different suppliers. So say if you only relied on an American company to supply you the cell culture media or to supply you the filters that you needed for your process, at this stage of the pandemic, when a lot of other vaccines are also in the process of scaling up production, you might find it difficult to find alternative suppliers to start with. But in addition to this, you're also at a stage where you've received approvals based on a specific process that you followed that uses specific materials that are given by certain approved suppliers. So if now at this stage you're saying instead of using filters or plastic bags by New York headquartered Paul Life Sciences, if you're going to turn around and say that now I'm going to use these products by Sartorius, which is a German company, you might find regulators in different countries asking you to show them through additional quality tests and through additional data that making the vaccine using these other products by a different company may will not hamper the quality or the results that the vaccine promises when it's using a specific product by another company. But yeah, that being said, you do have different suppliers in other parts of the world for some of these products. And apart from the United States for, say, single-use bioreactor systems and disposable bags that are made with them, apart from companies like Baxter Healthcare, which is an American multinational company, apart from Cytiva and Thermo Fisher, which are now headquartered in Massachusetts, you do have companies like Germany Sartorius. For cell culture media that are made by American companies like Hyclone and Merck Millipur, you do have alternatives in Germany's Cellgenics and um, India's High Media, as well as Switzerland's Lonza Group. But that being said, you have to also keep in mind the difficulties associated with trying to find alternatives at this stage of the pandemic, as well as trying to convince regulators that the vaccine that you're making using these different products will be just as good. 
You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was written and produced by me, Snigdha Sharma, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. You can follow us and leave us feedback on Facebook or Twitter at Express Podcasts or send us an email at podcasts at indianexpress.com. And if you like this show, please do subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts from so more people can find us. You can also look for us in the audio section in the top right corner of our website, indianexpress.com. 